To create the guide, I'll take the inside rim material, which is half inch wide and it's flat oval, flat on the back and slightly rounded on the front side. And I wanna shape it with the flat side out. So the material's been soaked, oh, probably about 10 minutes. And I wanna work out some of the stiffness just by going down to the end of the piece and coming back. If your piece of half inch flat oval is a little stiffer than this, you might have to soak it a bit more or maybe work it a bit more. But the goal is to get the stiffness out so that we can create a 12 inch diameter circle. And I like to measure this east and west, pull it on in and measure it north and south too. So I think we're pretty close. And this piece was probably maybe about four feet long or a little bit shorter. You just want to be sure you're not cutting it to the exact length that you need it for the final inside rim. I'm just doing an overlap here, a couple of cable ties or twist ties and take another measurement. The handle we're using for the apple basket is 12 inches so we'd like for the top of the basket to be 12 inches as well and I do like to put myself a mark in case this slips I'll know right where to set it back and I use this as a guide and I can see that I need to bring my basket out a little bit and then probably straight up. Now at this point, your basket may be narrower than mine and the guide, again, it helps to tell you how to angle those spokes as you continue to weave. So let's weave a couple more rows. I'm paying careful attention to the space between spokes at this point. I want those spokes to angle straight up the sides. And I could tell by the guide that I need to bring the weaving out. I've woven another couple rounds and it's time to put a new weaver in. And I'm gonna be right across that split. So I'll just cut the old end back. And now we are on the smooth side of the basket. I want to be sure and determine the smooth side on this weaver when I'm putting it in. Overlap on one and two, pull the piece forward, get it to position and overlap. I know I need to open this basket up a bit, so I'm making sure not to pull tight. You can see how those spokes will come in. So if your basket is a little bit large, uh, what you'll want to do to bring it in is to increase the tension just a bit. I'm adjusting the spokes as I go around, aiming for as even a space between spokes as I can. Pull outward on the spokes to keep that basket open adjust the spokes to keep the space between the spokes even. So I've gone around about two and a half times since I made my guide and I want to put this right back on the table and check and see where we are. And place the guide inside and I like to look right down at the center and I can see that I need to still bring my basket out a little bit. Let's talk about the profile of the basket. Turn it around so you can see it. Uh, one thing I really like about this basket is this nice rounded curve on the bottom. And so again, your spokes may be coming up a little bit straighter depending on how um, the turn up of the basket was right here around the edge of the spokes. 
or your basket may be a little bit broader and you may be needing to bring it in at this point. Just adjust the tension of the weavers and adjust the spokes as you go. If your spokes have really dried out, you can spray them with water. I would just spray from the weaving up, not re-wet the part of the basket that's already woven. I also like to use the guide to help hold the basket in shape. So if I was gonna set the basket down and work on it at a different time, I would just put the guide under it like this look down into the center, make sure everything looks nice and even, and let it sit that way. That helps train those spokes where you want them to go. I'm gonna continue weaving every three or four rows. I'm gonna check with the guide on the inside of the basket until the basket gets to be about six and a half inches tall, and that will give us about two inches of um, spoke above the weaving to do our next step. So I've gone almost three more rounds and I think I'm ready to check with the guide again. Maintaining that equal distance between spokes and on my basket keeping the weaving fairly loose so that my basket continues to open up. Now let's just check with the guide. I'm gonna continue weaving until I get near one of my shortest spokes. And I wanna have about two inches of space remaining on one of the shorter spokes. And then I'm ready to do the packing. The end of my weaver, I'm just gonna leave it. I may add on to it later, I may cut it back, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it. Let's stick it over here. And arbitrarily, I'll put a pin on one of the spokes, pick up my packing tool, and starting here near the base, I'll just work across three or four spokes at a time using the fingers and the packing tool and I will just work those weavers down toward the base and pack the basket. Get the weavers as tight as I can. Yours may be a little tighter or a little bit looser and I like to just go ahead and come all the way up to the top row. Then I'm going to turn the basket and work across the next three or four spokes. And I'll do this all the way around back to my mark. So this is my shortest spoke that I have two inches remaining and I just want to mark that for myself as I come back. I can remove this clip here and I want to see what the height of my basket is right there on that shortest spoke. Let me get this weaver out of the way. So the basket height is right at six inches or pretty darn close. And I want to go around a few spots on my basket and see that the height is six inches. So it looks about the same there. Turn on around. We're right at six. And if you're not, then just go ahead and put a slight pencil mark on that spoke for you to mark this height. Six inches. 
we're trying to level up that top row as much as possible and taper off this end. Right here, we're about six inches, six inches. So as we're coming into it, just past the spoke that I marked, we'll need to taper the weaver down and leave it behind a couple of spokes right here. So the overall length would be a couple of inches past my mark. I'm gonna unweave a few stitches. Let's spray this nice and wet and flexible. Just going to do a long taper from practically thread width all the way back over five or six inches to get to the full quarter inch width. And I want that just as gradual as I can make it. Now I'll weave, weave this tapered end weave this tapered end back into it and leave the last couple of stitches behind spokes there. And I like to take my twist tie or cable tie and just mark this area where the taper remains behind the spokes. This mark will remind me when I'm lashing to run my lashing stitch under here and under there to secure the end of that taper. The top row that will be covered by the rim is uh, 3 8 of an inch wide. And again, I'll just run the smooth side out. And I'm going to start this rim row where the taper ends by finding the last stitch that's on the outside of the spoke and putting my rim row behind that. And all the way around just plain weave. This material is 3 8 of an inch wide, which is slightly narrower than the rim material, which is half inch wide. This one row is an independent row. It's going to finish off on itself. We go all the way around, and as you notice, this row is weaving opposite of the top row of quarter inch flat. So I'm back around to the beginning and I'm simply going to do uh, an overlap, but I need to go on the outside of two adjacent spokes so that I can go behind and overlap this piece on itself. I'll trim it to right here, just to the edge of the spoke, and place this tail behind the spoke to do the overlap. The next step is soaking these spokes at the top so that we can do uh, the tuck over. Mm -hmm.